so this is part of the finish room project and I am quite behind on this project. Um, it literally is um, not taking, it's taking me way longer than I expected. And for the simple reason, there's been so much stuff going on in the cabinet shop that I just really haven't had a whole lot of time to get into here. Um, but a couple of things have changed. Uh, one is I have a spray booth coming. Two, I actually have a centrifuge or I have an in like duct blower coming for an air makeup unit. So I'm not going to be using two separate blowers. I'm using one blower. Um, and talking with a friend of mine, um, because I have a boiler system I'm going to be installing, he's talked me into actually adding a couple heat exchangers to that air makeup system to at least get some tempered air out of it. Um, so this control panel really isn't all that fancy or all that elaborate. It basically has a center, central point for controlling power. It has different circuit breakers for all the different electric components, a 24 volt DC power supply, a one horsepower VFD, a two horsepower VFD, a Dwyer Digihelic DH3 digital manometer, and then some start and stop switches and some manual auto switches. Um, so basically, the reason I ordered the spray booth in a three phase versus single is I want to be able to have a multi speed, one speed for spraying, which would be 60 hertz, and then another speed for basically flash off, which might be, you know, 30 or 45 hertz. Now, the air makeup blower, on the other hand, um, I wanted three phase for, um, for certain because I want to be able to maintain. Uh, specific static pressure within this room or within the building. And what's going to help me do that is this Dwyer Digihelic DH3 digital manometer. Now this is more than just a digital manometer, it's actually a communication device. It actually will send out a 4 to 20 milliamp signal to this VFD which will essentially automatically adjust the frequency to the motor to maintain that specific static pressure. So if I want to run this room between 0.02 to 0.04, this Digihelic is going to measure that for me and it's automatically going to adjust the VFD to maintain that blower speed to maintain that specific set point. Now this is not an elaborate setup as far as not uncommon. It is actually very common in a large commercial industrial application. Most any engineering contractor that does a spray booth or multi-spray booth and air makeup install, typically if they have more than one air makeup, one air makeup or multiple air makeups will be on a system that actually um, measures and manipulates the room static pressure using something like this Digihelic, or they might actually use the older model, which is what they call Photohelic. And again, it's just me measuring room uh, or static pressure and adjusting the blowers on the air makeups accordingly. The only thing is, is for the small shop, it's not very common. I could have bought this panel probably and spent two or $3,000, or I could have built it myself for about 500. So um, it's one of those things that um, I had the control and I wanted to use it and I've got a VFD that supports it properly. Real briefly, first of all, let's talk about negative versus positive. Negative pressure is really not a good thing for a lot of different reasons. Number one is negative pressure guaranteed to draw in all the dust throughout the rest of your shop into that room, no matter how good your filtration is. Number two is if you have a heating system that has open combustion, whether it's a wood burning stove, a natural gas or LP or fuel oil furnace or boiler um, that uses indoor combustion air, and whether it's a natural gas or LP, if it's power vented or if it's a natural draft. Anytime you run a negative pressure, air is gonna take the path of least resistance. And the first place it's gonna go is down the flue stack. And what that'll do is actually pull a negative draft, will actually pull out carbon monoxide. And then if you're really unlucky, it'll actually um, trip your flame rollout safety or a hot, um, um, a high limit switch because you're not moving the gases uh, fast enough and the heat exchanger is getting too hot. So that's really why you don't want to run a negative pressure. And the same thing with the wood burning stove, you run a negative pressure, basically it pulls all that carbon monoxide back in and you could have some other issues as well. So 
a slight positive pressure is better than anything. Um, if you can maintain a neutral pressure, that's great, but typically a slight positive pressure, say 0.02 to 0.04, around there, is really all that you need. I just wanted to kind of go over how this works. I do have this set up as auto manual, and I'm gonna bring the camera in here shortly just to kind of show you what's going on. I do have a temporary blower unit hooked up to this, which is not the one I'm gonna be using, but it's kind of doing the same thing. So. This isn't set up ideally right now because this digital magnahelic is actually supposed to um, measure atmospheric versus room, but for testing purposes, I kind of have it set up backwards just to kind of show that it does work. So I'm gonna bring the camera in closer here and show you how this works. Okay, so I don't have this drive hooked up. I've got it powered off right now. The only thing I got powered up is the 24 volt power supply for the magnahelic um, or the digihelic and then um, the uh, two horsepower drive here. So if I push the start button, I've got it on manual right now. The fan's gonna run, uh, I've got it set at 30 hertz. Um, if I go to auto, you can see that the it's fluctuating. And it's fluctuating based on how I have the manometer measuring the static pressure within the room. Now it's not giving an ideal um, reading because it's basically it's pressurizing a room that's already, it's measuring against itself. So it's actually more, I guess you could say confused more than anything, but I just wanted to show you the idea of what it does. So this here, it's bouncing around a little bit and it's actually, when these numbers go up and down, it's actually adjusting the frequency accordingly. So if I go back to manual, I just run at 30. If I go back to auto, it's gonna speed up and slow down accordingly to maintain the parameters. Now I have set these parameters in here, I don't remember exactly what it was, but basically it was, I think it was about a 0.02 or 0.03 difference between the two. And right now, um, it is sensing through a couple of tubes in the back here the, the pressure difference. So again, there's a lot of wires here. We got 24 volts here from the transformer from the power control and then these here are all um, I think the black this yeah <laughs> I could actually show you here. Um, so these two here the red and black one, these are the four to 20 milliamp signal, and the rest of these here are actually the three wire control, and then also this manual auto switch. So these drives are from Automation Direct. Um, they're branded Automation Direct. They call them Dura, uh, Durapulse. These are the GS20 series. These are kind of their latest and greatest. They have a two year warranty. Um, they are made over in Taiwan. Um, but what I will tell you is, let me grab the manual here. So this is just a portion of the manual. Um, I don't know why you're gonna see this. This is probably 75 sheets of paper maybe, printed on two sides. So about 150 pages of the manual. That's only a portion of the manual. The manual itself is like 639 or 642 pages. So I just basically printed off the ones I thought I would need. What's so different about this drive is instead of having a typical parameter range of say 100 to 150 parameters, there's like over 600 parameters in here. And the reason being is these drives actually have a PLC built into them, uh, which is something you just don't find. These drives are very inexpensive. This one was $188. This one was like $155. This is a one horse versus a two horsepower. Single phase input. Now one thing I want to point out about um, Automation Direct is they sell single phase models and three phase models. I think single phase goes up to three horse. And if you need something bigger than a three horse, you have to go to a three phase input and then derate from there. So the nice thing is, is that these drives have a full output capacity without derating. So this one is capable of putting out seven and a half amps on continuous torque and eight and a half amps on variable torque with 230 volts in. And this one here is like, I want to say five amps and four, I think it is. 
Um, so they don't derate them. Um, but again, if you go past the single phase input and need a larger horsepower, then you basically have to double the size of the drive for the horsepower you're driving, which is pretty normal. But what I liked about these here was that they were already derated in single phase input. Um, I talked about the PLC. Um, essentially, this setup here, with this uh, Digihelic is actually considered to be a PID system. And again, all it's gonna do is modulate this VFD um, for what the Digihelic is saying the static pressure is supposed to be. Now, if you look at the display here, uh, let's move in a little bit. It's fluctuating because it's on automatic. If I turn this switch over to manual, it'll say that the set frequency for manual is 30. And I can set that to whatever I want, but if we go back to automatic, right now because the DigiHelix is still measuring the, the pressure in the room, that's essentially what it's doing. It's actually moving um, the frequency around. Now if I go push start, you can see how it moves up and down. And if I turn it to manual, it'll just move to the preset speed of 30. And I can move this to whatever I want. It's 3520. I can bring it down to whatever I want. I'm just gonna bring it back down to 30 here. Okay, and if I go back to automatic, And then uh, we'll stop it. So yeah, and uh, here's the the blower. Let's start them back up here again. Okay, so that was kind of it. Um, just kind of wanted to go over this. Um, it actually looks like a lot, but actually got a lot of support from the guys at Automation Direct. They have a really good technical support department. It was actually able to help me uh, get this wired up with this uh, 4 to 20 milliamp signal, and uh, it worked out really well. So the only thing I couldn't figure out was is how to get this thing to understand that they wanted to do this manual and auto, and basically just had me add another switch. Um, the manual might have covered it. I just couldn't see it. Like I said, the manual is very overwhelming. So um, I will say though, uh, if you're looking for an entry level drive at a very reasonable price uh, with a lot of stuff, check out the Automation Direct models, uh, the GS20s. And the nice thing with the GS20 series is you can actually get a junction box to turn this into a NEMA 4. Uh, so it wouldn't have to go in an enclosure, but I'm doing an enclosure here just because I want it all contained into one separate uh, enclosure cabinet. So. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once I get this thing fully operational, I actually uh, mount this panel inside the cabinet. The cabinet is actually 20 inches wide, 24 inches high, and it's 10 inches deep. So it's an actual um, electrical enclosure with a hinged door. So I'll get the DigiHelic mounted, the start stop station. Um, I have to do for surely auto manual, and I actually have to do a high low switch as well um, for the uh, spray booth. So. Um, and I'm going to do a bunch of indicator lights as well. So anyways, as this project continues to move forward, I'll bring you along for it. But I just wanted to bring you along uh, talking about this control panel. And um, just to let you know as far as this is what I'm up to right now. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Questions and positive comments welcome. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.